More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated, with the Tuesday More Heart Than Talent Facebook Live, sporting gray today, so gray and gold. Honored to be here with you on this rainy afternoon in beautiful Northern California. As we move into the end of the era, 2018 is almost in the books. We're moving to the last month of this beautiful calendar year. Inspired to be able to share content with you today and also looking forward to 2019. My newest book, The Breakthrough Factor, is about to be released in the next couple of weeks. So we're very excited here at Golden Mastermind Seminars to be able to provide that content for you. Also, we'll be delivering a new book in 2019, The Esteem Factor. So we'll be letting you know more details about the release of that book coming up, as I said, in the next couple of weeks or so. So we're going to move into the content portion of today's live. And what I'm going to cover today is called The Power of Self-Management, Managing Self in Time. That will be the topic. Now, this Saturday, I will be in Saddlebrook, New Jersey with Diane Hunt. And I want to thank you, Diane, for hosting the event. This is Diane's, her fifth event in the last 12 months. So thank you very much for this year and one last year in December of 2017. So thank you very much. On December 22nd, I will be in Terrytown, New York. On December 15th, I will be in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'll be ending the year on December 29th, in Los Angeles, California, at the Hilton Hotel at LAX. And then in 2019, a whole new year will be moving into more events, more promotions, more products, services, benefits, and features. And in today's call, we're going to cover managing self in time. Now, the term time management itself is a misnomer because there are 86,400 seconds on a clock, 1,440 minutes, one hour, 24 hours, one day, one week, one month, one quarter, six months, three quarters of a year, one year, and it's all she wrote. And that's what happens to many people. They start off a new year with a good intention and a poor delivery. Your habits, your mindset, your 90-day game plan, your daily method that you operate on clearly define short and long-term goals. You're going to determine your outcomes, your results, and the solutions you live in. But if you find yourself wasting your most valuable commodity, time, then time is not an asset, time is a liability. And if you avoid production, if you avoid learning, if you avoid recovery, and you continue to get ready to get ready, then you're going to end up wasting your most valuable commodity, time. It's going to be really hard. I have a long way to go. That's how many people talk. Well, it's not a long way to go. It's midnight. Every single day you are granted a gift called time. It's a bank account, 86,400 seconds. There are a few people who are very, very skilled with managing self in time. Now, here's the word you want to look at, E-F-F-E-C-T-I-V-E. The word is effective. You want to be effective at how you view time because time is either an asset or is a liability. That's completely determined 
by your perception, by the way you perceive a situation before you engage it. But if you perceive a situation to be painful, then there's a high probability you will avoid an outcome that has not happened. That is called control. That's what many people do. They're in control of being out of control. Now, if you're committed, you're clear, you're aware, you know, and you trust, that's conscious awareness. That conscious awareness understands that uh, that conscious awareness also allows you to understand the value of your time. People who are effective are skilled multitaskers. It means they can do more in one action, one minute, one 50-minute segment, one 15-minute segment than some people can do in a whole day because they're effective at it. If you have a system, a method, you're detail conscious, you're organized, it will enhance your ability to create results while living in a solution. But if you're overwhelmed, undisciplined, unorganized, and you wing it, then you'll have challenges tape turning time into result or time into money. Why is one person good at managing self and time while other people try to manage time? Now, the term ma time management is a misnomer because you can't stop the hands on the clock unless you unplug the battery or you unplug you unplug the cord, but that doesn't stop how time moves. You can stop the clock, but you don't stop time. So is time valuable or is time a liability? So it's either an asset or a liability. Now for me, I know how to borrow time from other areas. I leverage myself all of the time in time. I have employees, I have vendors, I have contractors, I have other people at work for me. I'm constantly outsourcing details to other people who can do what I do better than I do while I can compensate them for them. So I can do what I do best, which is manage myself in time, create results, live in the solution, so I can learn the laws of compensation. Now, if you own a business and, you're, and this business is important to you in either 2018 or 2019, there are certain skill sets that you master, number one, emotionally, and then physically that will assist you to monetize that business. Value and service. Now, you don't raise your price, you raise your value. So as you become more valuable, you're actually creating a value ladder, meaning that you're, up, you're going up the scale of your ladder. So value of your time, that's the first thing you take a look at. How much is an hour of your time worth? Bottom of the rung, it should be this. Your time should be worth, Chris, can I get another black marker? Your time should be worth at least, I'll write this out. One hundred dollars an hour. So right there, one hundred dollars an hour. Now just factor that. Five hours a day at a hundred bucks an hour. That's five hundred bucks a day times six, three thousand dollars a week times four. There's twelve thousand dollars a week for a part-time effort. That's not too bad. But that's how you start to value your time. Well, how do you do that? What's going to bring you the greatest return on your energy? What will bring you the greatest return on your time? R-O-E, R-O-E-T, return on energy, return on time. As you start to put that equation together and you start to be and stay in the flow and you're in the moment of this, you'll start to raise your value. Service, you get paid for service and value. That's how you get compensated in free enterprise. And then the skills, your communication skills in any business will unequivocally determine your outcome. If you're a waiter waiting tables, you can be an order taker, or you can be a waiter waiting tables, and you can be a consultant. You can begin to offer some of the best values on the menu. You can offer what's on the wine list. You can do suggestive selling, suggestive marketing. You can use persuasion techniques that will ha enhance the gastronomic experience of the outcome before it even happens, meaning that you let the person know that you're waiting tables on, that you're in charge of their ex culinary experience, and before they leave, they will experience a great experience. Now, when you start to paint the picture for people, it starts to create a different outcome. It starts to enhance the value of the value. And as you become skilled at this, this becomes persuasive. Now, you have to let go of your anxiety about outcomes that haven't happened. When you have rejection issues, abandonment issues, when you have anxiety about outcomes that haven't happened, you're diminishing your value before you even start, which means you're going to avoid the engagement before you even begin because you're so overwhelmed about the possibility of being rejected, abandoned, neglected, traumatized, any multitude of situations based on a past event that's unresolved. Emotions give off an emotional response. 
a corresponding response. Emotions give off a corresponding response, meaning that when you, before you engage in a situation, if you're worried, anxious, or in doubt about the outcome before it's even happened, your emotions are giving off a telepathic message saying, please violate me, please reject me, please abandon me. I'm worried that this will happen. Then you attract your reality, the very situation you sought to avoid. Now, procrastination is the number one thief of time. Procrastination in Latin means procrastinare. That's how it's spelled, procrastinare. What it means in Latin is to uh, avoid. To avoid. That's what procrastination is. Then when you edify it by saying, I am the world's worst procrastinator, you've now, now you're going to attract your reality, the very situation that you seek to avoid, disappointment. Now, what does procrastination mean and why do people do it? Well, the reason, well, the number one reason that people procrastinate is to avoid perceived pain. Typically, that is not real. When you have a past event that you hold on to and don't understand it, don't remember it, and have repressed it, well, that becomes an emotion. When you have an, a past event that you hold on to, Know that you do what you do and keep doing it over and over. That's suppression. That's what many people do. They suppress their feelings. And then there are many people that repress their feelings. There's a separation between these two. Repression is what I don't know. I understand. I don't understand. My whole childhood was a blur. I don't remember this. My whole, from first grade to sixth grade, I have no memory, usually because of traumas that have happened that I've repressed. Suppressed is when I do the same thing over and over knowing that I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm not capable of letting go. That's what most people do. That's what procrastination is. Have you ever walked your dog in a neighborhood and someone raises their garage door and their car's not in the garage, they can't possibly get their car in there because of all the stuff that's stuffed in that garage because they have challenges letting go. They avoid letting go and it continues to compound and build up and build up and eventually They've got one car, one side of the car of the garage filled, and then eventually they got the other side. Now the cars are parked outside because of all the stuff that's compounded, all the stuff that's filled. And if that's your garage, I highly recommend that either this holiday season, today, tomorrow, very soon, you start to address that situation by letting go of the clutter, by letting go of the junk, by letting go of the stuff that you hold on to that isn't required, isn't necessary that you can move along, move on, put in a curve, give to goodwill, whatever the situation is, but stop avoiding. I wrote a book called The Procrastination Cure. Best-selling book. It's in, every, it's in every Barnes & Noble in America. It was originally called From Procrastination to Production, and I address in great detail why people procrastinate. Procrastination becomes the greatest thief of your time. It's an avoidance tendencies. Be clear on what you avoid, how often you avoid, and why you avoid. You'll avoid to, to avoid perceived pain. You'll avoid to rebel. This is what many people do. Many people don't make their bed in the morning because they justify by saying, well, what's the use? I'm going to get in it tonight, so why make the bed? Well, you make the bed because it's a habit. You make the bed because it's a discipline. You make the bed because it would give you pride and dignity about a task well done. And it's also the first duty and detail that you do when you get out of bed so that you start to have a routine as you go through the day, get out of bed, brush your teeth, exercise. That would be a good start of a routine. Get out of bed, make your bed, brush your teeth, do a devotional prayer. Whatever it is you do, but start to develop routines. What many people do is they avoid routines. Now, the reason that someone will avoid a routine is because they are this word, W-I-N-G-E-R, winger. That doesn't mean they fly. It means they wing it. It means they're flitting around, they're floating around. They don't have a system, don't have a routine, don't have a method, don't have any structure, don't have a, don't have a script, don't have any order, don't have any discipline because they want to wing it. They're rebelling against their own success. They're so rebellious that they rebel against their own success. And in the Procrastination Cure, that's a chapter called The Rebellious, Rebellious Rebeller. Now, if that is you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a nonconformist, but if you're not conforming to your own success principles or own success strategies and you're just getting ready to get ready and unfortunately that's what a lot of people do time is valuable it's an asset or time is not valuable it's a liability that is up to you to determine now if you if you don't produce in the daytime when you say you're going to produce and then it becomes nighttime and you want to relax and you're guilty well now your your relaxed time is is not 
going to be you're not going to be able to relax because you're guilty so it's you've defeated the whole purpose you want to be able to relax free of guilt and produce free of guilt and let go of the anxiety about outcomes that have not happened when but when you're a chronic avoider you're going to keep doing the same thing over and over until you understand why you do what you do so in the scale of energy it breaks down like this there's anxiety fear and doubt that's how this will look it's anxiety fear and doubt and doubt is right there and then above doubt is a place called conscious awareness right there that's an energy called conscious awareness and then above conscious awareness is an energy called enlightenment so these are the scales of energy typically so the lowest level of energy is anxiety followed closely by fear and doubt now doubt there's a gap right here between doubt and conscious awareness now I call that the gap that's where a large percent of society lives they're in anxiety fear and doubt getting ready to get ready overwhelmed by the possibility of the fear of an outcome that hasn't happened this becomes the greatest waster of their time because they end up in their head processing analyzing thinking getting ready to get ready using education to medicate themselves meaning they read more books CDs download podcasts and they become students of being students but they don't become a student of this they don't become a student of the application application is the knowledge and the content put into an application that creates a result and a solution now as you begin to live in the solution and the result now time is a different meaning and when time is valuable you devote energy to it I watch the clock I mean I watch the clock and I'm aware of the clock I'm not a clock watcher but I'm aware of the clock and I'm aware of what time it is I wrap up at a certain time I end at a certain time I'm on time I do my best to show up on time and I'm seldom ever late if you're a winger overwhelmed getting ready to get ready and a procrastinator you typically will be so overwhelmed that you're behind when you're behind you're behind in a lot of areas you're forgetful and when you're forgetful now you're creating what is called collateral damage that collateral damage means you leave a wake of stuff unfinished now this is what that means if you're an unfinisher and this is what many people are it's an open looper so this is what an open looper looks like an open looper is like this it's called a SOP an open looper has SOPs a series of projects an open looper is a series of projects that they start uncompleted do not finish so these unfinished projects are what compound this is why people get behind in their taxes this is why they get behind in their bills this is why they start to get credit notices this is why they start to get behind on their money this primarily because they are overwhelmed they don't have a structure they do not have a system they do not have a routine if you don't have a daily method of operation what you have is a daily method to fail and that unfortunately encompasses a lot of society now time also requires an accountability as you become accountable for your time you have a better understanding of time and if you learn to do if you become effective you can get more accomplished than you can in less time than you can more time I was just coaching a woman right before this call on how to condense the time she spent explaining now you can be detail conscious but if you if you are so focused in the details that you don't focus on the result oftentimes you spend too much time explaining validating and justifying if you grew up in a household where no matter what you did it was never good enough there's a high probability that your communication style is based on validating justifying and explaining yourself and if you're a chronic justifier explainer or validator you're gonna spend a lot of your time talking if you're a skilled communicator you will spend most of your time asking questions so you can evaluate rather than pontificate explainers pontificate a lot getting ready to get ready they over explain over dramatize spend too much in chaos and drama validating justifying explaining himself and one of their favorite words is yeah but they use these two words yeah but they say this sounds good but and then they go into a dissertation an explanation and when you're skilled in communication you'll learn to ask closed-in questions and open-ended questions you'll learn to ask yes no questions and then questions that lead to an answer that you can create rapport in clearly defined questions about an outcome questions that are more explanatory and questions that are more about a dream or some what something wants and so when you're able to do this you're able to move conversation along 
your objective in conversation is to be able to evaluate whether there's a connection with someone, whether you're sitting on a plane, whether you're in an airport, whether you're in a mall, whether you're in a restaurant. I mean, you're just having good old-fashioned conversation, but you also want to be able to see, is the person open to the connection? And you learn to do this in increments of time. In prospecting, you should be able to evaluate whether you have a prospect or a suspect in one minute, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes, whatever it is, whatever model that you're modeling, whatever products, benefits, features you're selling, you should be able to stand. Is um, you should be able to establish is this a qualified buyer in a relatively short period of time by the skill, mindset, and habit you develop in your specific vocation, provided time is valuable. If time isn't valuable, you'll have a GOFC. Let me write that out for you. That's an acronym, G-O-F-C. Now, I invented this acronym several years ago in the 90s, well over 20 years ago, G-O-F-C, good old-fashioned chat. That's what many people do in their business conversations. What many people do is they have a good old-fashioned chat. It means they do a lot of talking, a lot of explaining. They don't evaluate whether they have a qualified buyer or not. They spend most of their time in communication, talking, not really asking, evaluating. The reason being because many people are uncomfortable to ask the clearly defined questions because your brain and your ego says, well, that's being direct. I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to offend someone. I don't want to make a mistake. And most importantly, I do not want to get in trouble. So if you have a trouble consciousness, a conflict consciousness, you'll avoid what you perceive to be conflict by being a nice guy, nice girl, you won't get to the point. You won't have ask the clearly defined questions. Then you will waste your most valuable commodity, time. And then you'll be disappointed because you don't get a result. You had a good old-fashioned chat, but nothing happened from it. Someone who's effective with time is very clear with their communication. They understand the details. They ask the questions about the outcome. They move the conversation along. That's what someone who's skilled at this process does because time is a commodity. Time is a value and time is an asset. But when time has little to no value and you're worried about outcomes that haven't happened, you will burn time. You will exhaust time and you won't be time conscious. When you're not time conscious, the day gets away from you. You woke up in the morning and you had a good intention and a poor delivery. And that poor delivery, all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock and you've been busy but nothing got accomplished. Now if that is you, today is the day to change. It's not a how do I. That is an I am state of consciousness. Now, in time, I just slipped in Starbucks. That is a double espresso. So as you become, as you go from being accountable to this, now here's a key term in the communication today. It means I, you, I am production conscious. Now, when you are production conscious, your time is meaning and you produce results in the time you dedicated in dedicated blocks of time. But if you tell yourself that I'm real busy, you have no idea, all the obligations, I'm an addicted over obligator, and you have no idea, all the, I do have an idea because I know how most of society is. Most of society is very predictable. Someone's giving me the thumbs up. Most of society over obligates themselves due to an emotional addiction called codependence. Codependence derive their personality from over obligating themselves, doing more for others than they ever do for themselves. It's very common commonality. It's a book called Codependent No More that will greatly assist you to understand. Read Chapter 5 in that book, great book by Melody Beatty, over 50 million copies called Detachment. When you're able to detach from an outcome, now it's yeah, you want to understand the context of that. Detaching from an outcome doesn't mean you care, but you care enough about self in esteem, a regard for self that you don't waste the most valuable commodity time. And if you are skilled at time, you're going to be able to let other people know that you're going to pass on a situation today. You'll be able to let people go that you'll be able to let people know and go that what they're offering may not be of an interest to you. And you're able to diplomatically move out of conversations that you can tell aren't empowering, aren't going to go anywhere, aren't something you have any interest in. You're not going to let someone bend your ear. You're not going to hold on to anxiety about offending someone because your time is valuable. And here's something you also want to understand in time. Time is not about getting to the point. Time is about clarity. I'm not direct. I am clear. Someone goes, you're very direct. I don't see that in myself. I see myself as being clear. I have clarity. I have value in time. 
I know what an hour of my time is worth, and I'm not willing to give it away when I'm in production time. But if I'm in charity time, I'll give away charity time. But if I'm in production time, that time is valuable. If I'm in relaxed time, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be focusing on business. I'm going to focus on relaxing. And when I'm relaxing, I'm. I'm. My relaxing is productive because I'm not guilty. If you're guilty when you should be relaxing, then your time's not valuable because you have blown your time by avoiding what you should do. So you can be disappointed later, and then it'll toss and turn rather than being able to rest. When you take a long, deep breath, it allows you to release the neurons that wire and fire that form a familiar feeling that creates anxiety. That anxiety has a shelf life. And that anxiety also gives off a corresponding emotion based on events that you hold on to that are unresolved. As you begin to let go, separate feelings from events that no longer serve you, now you lessen your, your, your ability to be in state. You lessen your inability to be present. If you're not present and aware, then you're going to be checked out, overwhelmed, processing, thinking, analyzing, evaluating, getting ready, you're ready, and most importantly, avoiding. Your time is going to have very little value, and you're going to waste a lot of your most valuable time. That's what so many people do. They start a business, own a business, but they're not real, they don't really own the time of the business. They don't really produce. What they do is they go to seminars, rallies, conventions. They educate themselves, and while they're educating themselves, they're medicating themselves on their education. And so they become medicated on the education called knowledge, but they don't take the knowledge into application. Application creates a result. Application is repetition and experience, creativity and innovation, and that's what creates the compound effect called the solution. As you begin to live in the solution and not live in the problem, your time becomes more valuable because you're focused on an outcome and focused on the income. When you focus on the outcome, the income, now you start to create the word profit. Profit consciousness, production consciousness, results consciousness, it means awareness, means knowing, understanding. As you live in this energy, now you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that created your anxiety. Your anxiety is based on a series of events that are unresolved that you hold on to. Anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, grief, and apathy are the emotions that lead to anxiety, fear, and doubt, and that's what leads to avoidance and procrastination. You'll procrastinate to avoid perceived pain that is real or unreal, typically based on an unresolved event that has regret, or anxiety about a future event based on an unresolved event called anxiety. And when you hold on to these feelings, you are the mind-body connection to the events. As you begin to let go of the events, meaning, I understand, I know, I'm aware of why I do what I do, and I'm committed to no longer being that person. It's never too late to be the person you could have been. I wrote a post similar to that this morning, and it's never too late to be the person you know you could be. You can be that person now. That's the value of a vision. That's the value of purpose, cause, meaning. When you are cause-driven, purpose-driven, when you come from meaning and you change the meaning of the way the brain perceived an event, now it no longer has the same significance. That's what letting go means. That's how you go from addiction to recovery. This can be in a 24-hour period based on this, a commitment. When you have abandonment rejection issues, you'll create the very situation to fulfill your feelings to keep you overwhelmed and keep you right. When you let go of being right and you're not in the right-wrong dichotomy of black and white, you're in a world called consciousness. That is called recovery. As you move into recovery, your time is valuable. There's a very interesting dichotomy that I've witnessed. I've suggested to many, many of my clients that they attend a 12-step meeting, a group meeting, a meetup, uh, a group that gets together and discusses relevance, challenges, addictions, situations, 12-step programs. But many people go, oh, I don't have the time to do that. Oh, I, I just couldn't do Oh, I went to one of those and those people, oh, I, I watched these people, and oh, all they did was talk about their problems. Those, those people were Christians, and they held hands, and they prayed. And so that that's flaw finding, and unfortunately, many people look for the flaw rather than the result. And that person that looks for the flaw tends to find the flaws in many, many situations, and then their time isn't valuable. Your time is so valuable that you want to put a price tag on it, $100 an hour, $200 an hour, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars an hour. Start to start to value your time, and you do that by valuing yourself. When you are valuable, now you have a regard for self that is esteem. 
My name is Jeffrey Combs. I'm the president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Now, as you start to, to start to wrap up this content today, I want to assist you to understand this. For you to change, it's a commitment. For you to change, you require a compelling reason. That's a why. A clearly defined reason and outcome. One of the most compelling reasons is the pain is great enough. That's one reason. But one of the reasons is because it has significance. You want to finish this year with significance, meaning, cause, purpose. You want to finish this year with momentum in an energetic vibration that says I'm in consciousness. And if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentoring, I offer free 20-minute coaching sessions to anyone who's serious about their time because my time is valuable. And if you're serious, contact me on Facebook with your phone number and I will return your message as soon as possible. Saddlebrook, New Jersey, this Saturday, December 1st. Have a great end of the month of November, and let the new year, let this, the end of the year be the very best month you have of 2018 because your time is valuable. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one -on -one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one -on -one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new member's welcome kit and my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today.